Hello everyone, I'm back to take on the other two Matt Powell creation moment videos. We already saw how inept his ability to fact check is, so let's see what malarkey he's cooked up for us today. This video is going to cover creation moments 3 and 4, titled The Circle of the Earth and Biased Scientists, respectively. So a lot of people say, well, the Bible, you know, you can't really trust the Bible because it was written by a bunch of savages and by a bunch of sheep herders. Well, what I think is so silly about that is those same sheep herders were some of the greatest mathematicians, and, you know, the ancient Greeks were some of the greatest mathematicians of all time. Wait, what? No, the authors of the Bible were Middle Eastern Hebrews, and the few places where we do know the authors' identities, they are not Greek. Paul, for instance, was born in part of what is now known as Turkey. Much of the Bible was written in Hebrew, with some parts written in Biblical Aramaic, both of which, though, are Semitic language families. Other Semitic language families include Arabic, Amharic, Tigrinya, Tigra, and Maltese. Eventually, the Bible was, indeed, translated into Greek from Hebrew, but it wasn't written by Greeks. How do you know so little of your own Bible's history? And these people were very smart, and I'm going to prove that to you from the Bible, that these people knew what they were talking about, and they were very scientifically literate, and they were very logically literate. You're going to prove who was scientifically and logically literate, the Greeks or the biblical authors? We already know the Greeks were scientifically curious and productive since they came up with ideas like the atom many years before experiments vindicated its existence. We can also see that many of our basic ideas about logic come from the ancient Greeks. And so the Bible says in Isaiah 40:22, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. So notice it says that he sits on the circle of the earth. So the people understood that the earth was spherical even before Columbus had made the discovery that the Earth was indeed a sphere. I'm tempted to repeatedly say no here again, but I'll try to refrain. First off, a circle isn't a sphere. Frisbees and pizza plates are both very circular and not spherical. A circle is a two-dimensional object, i.e. it's flat. A sphere is a three-dimensional object. I understand that some people translate this passage as saying sphere instead of circle, but you didn't even manage that, Matt. Why? And this isn't just being pedantic since the difference is taught in elementary school. Next, Christopher Columbus in 1492 AD didn't show the Earth was spherical. Eratosthenes did that prior to 194 BC. Pretty much no educated person thought the Earth was flat since the 3rd century AD. And the Christian church in the Roman world eventually adopted the Greek science neither of them invented. The legend that Columbus set out to prove that the Earth was round came from writer Washington Irving in 1828. Do some research, please, if only because the real history is so much more interesting and true. And these people understood this, which means that they were very literate, they understood science, they understood logic, and they understood that the Earth was indeed a sphere. And this is way before any science came out on this. So this is just another example of how the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate. I know you have no conception of history at this point from the few things you've said so far, so I'll let a Christian source explain this to you. Quote, Ancient people were very good at observing the physical properties of the earth without necessarily understanding how all those properties worked. The horizon of the Earth is easily seen from any high vantage point or open area as an encompassing circle. This led ancient peoples to describe this circle or the horizon as the edge or end of the Earth. Many people believe in the theory of the Big Bang, that at one point that all of the matter and energy in the universe was once contained in a swirling dot smaller than a period on a page, and then bang, out of nothing, everything comes into being. Now, I'm no expert in cosmology, but by your own explanation, the universe didn't come from nothing. It came from that dot, which is called the singularity. Do you listen to what you say? 
Anybody knows that if a spinning object breaks apart in a frictionless environment, the fragments will all spin the same direction. Wait a minute, where have I heard this before? Evolutionists claim that the solar system coalesced from a nebula five billion years ago. What they seem to overlook is the law of conservation of angular momentum. If an object spinning in a frictionless environment breaks apart, the pieces will retain the same spin as the original body. Oh yeah, Tony Reed broke down this bad argument in his video, How Creationism Taught Me Real Science 72, Conservation of Angular Momentum. This argument is frequently pushed by Kent Hovind and has no basis in science. Not that Matt reads technical literature anyway, or fact checks the likes of Kent Hovind. If everything was once contained in a little swirling dot, smaller than the period on the page, and then boom, it all breaks apart in this frictionless environment, why do two planets spin backwards? There seems to be a bit of confusion here. First, who's claiming that the singularity from which the universe came was swirling? What's the evidence for this claim? Second, this argument, though, ignores the fact that planets can be affected by factors that change their rotation. Third, the universe began 13.8 billion years ago, whereas our solar system is a newbie, forming about 4.6 billion years ago. That's nearly 10 billion years of cosmology going on, including colliding galaxies and new solar systems like ours, forming from stuff that could actually be described as swirling. While you seem to think the universe and solar system are interchangeable here, they're not. It's like God knew that this theory was going to come along. And so he debunked it by saying, hey, two of you planets, you're going to spin the other way. Wait, that's how God decided to debunk... What's he debunking exactly? How the planets in our solar system spin has no relation to how the universe formed, and there are very clear and detailed explanations as to why those planets spin backwards. For example, Venus spins backwards likely due to the Sun and other planets' gravitational pull on its mantle and core. Uranus, on the other hand, seems to have been struck by multiple, smaller objects that caused it to rotate on its side. So are you telling me God made the planets spin backwards, but only made them do so in such a way that we humans were able to construct coherent reasons as to why? How is that logical? Anyway, that's the end of this video, so let's move on to the next. Hi, my name is Corbin Brock. I'm with uh, Way of Truth, uh, just, just speaking uh, about some topics about creation today. Hey, copyrighted. Uh, first thing I want to share with you is just uh, this quote by uh, Ernst Hegel. Spontaneous generation must be true, not because it had been proven in the laboratory, but because otherwise it would be necessary to believe in a creator. This claim sounded extremely fishy to begin with, and tracing it to its source only made me more suspicious. If you search the quote, then naturally Kent Hoven comes up. Hoven says, quote, Heckel said he claimed that spontaneous generation must be true, not because it had been proven in the laboratory, but because otherwise it would be necessary to believe in a creator, close quote. He cites an alleged 1875 trial at the University of Jena. If you look up this trial, then you almost inevitably find creationists mindlessly repeating the claim. But what is the source of the claim? As it happens, this claim originated in a court case between Ernst Heckel and a guy named Otto Hamann. They were suing each other for slander, and one of those slanderous comments that Haman seems to have made was the trial at Jena. Outside of Haman claiming it, there is no independent evidence that it actually occurred. It's just an unsubstantiated claim. What a surprise that one of Powell's cohorts would unquestioningly repeat a baseless claim. A lot of times the reason people believe in evolution is not necessarily because of the convincing arguments of evolution, but because the alternative would be to believe in a creator. Be Who? Name someone. You can believe in both God and evolution, as many people do. Because the fact is, you either have to believe in a creator that created the universe, or you have to believe that the universe could, ho could somehow create itself from nothing. And that is another quote by uh, actually Stephen Hawking uh, on the topic. He says, because there are laws, such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. These guys are obsessed with Stephen Hawking despite reading none of his work. I think Hawking is merely saying that there are physical laws which cause universes to spontaneously form from something their very intricate physics best describes as nothing. 
Now, the title of this video is Biased Scientists, but this quote doesn't really sound like he's biased towards a conclusion. It sounds like he studied the material, in a way the creationists very clearly haven't, and determined based on that science work that universes can form from nothing, whatever that may be. I'm 23, I've been to college before, I've obviously sat in all the lectures, uh, the evo learning about evolution and, and things like that, and that is just stupid logic. Because there are laws such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing, that seems to me like that is just willfully ignorant of the truth. You think just because you've been to college that you have some grasp on the topics at hand? You don't show that you know anything about it since you said that Hawking was using stupid logic. I don't think this conclusion is based on purely logic. I think it's based on experiments and observations within cosmology. From what I've seen online, Hawking was merely saying that there are physical laws, remember, gravity is a physical law, that make the formation of a universe from what physicists call nothing possible. Now, even assuming he's wrong, I don't see anything inherently biased about this statement. You know, the Bible kind of talks about this topic in Romans chapter 1, for the invisible things of him, talking about God, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Um, you know, they're, they're without excuse. They have done enough experiments, they have enough knowledge to where they, they understand that that is just foolishness. I think the same exact thing could be said of young earth creationism. There's so much evidence indicating that the earth wasn't created some six to 10,000 years ago that believing it is just absurd. And the Bible says that the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. It's a foolish thing to say and it's a foolish thing to believe that there is no God, that somehow something that doesn't exist, being the universe, could create itself even though it doesn't exist and it could do that from nothing that just makes absolutely no sense. That is just a, a stupid logic. I think Hawking is taking a bit of creative license and saying that the universe would create itself, since clearly the universe isn't conscious. But it seems that his underlying point, which Corbin doesn't understand because he's taking the quote out of context, is well understood among physicists. After all, Lawrence Krauss wrote an entire book titled A Universe from Nothing, where he details evidence in support of the hypothesis. Now, Corbin doesn't make any more arguments after this point, he just reiterates his arguments and fake quote. Yet again, we have more examples of Matt and his friends failing at every turn to attack science, which isn't at all surprising because they do minimal research of the relevant topics at best. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.